Methodology of Humanities, Module 3, Narration and Representation, Part 5, Voice of the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages began with the fall of the Roman Empire and merged into the Renaissance and the Age of Discovery spanning from the 5th century AD to the 15th century AD. This period witnessed narrative developments which extended the common understanding of poets' wise. Poets or artists or writers in general have got a device, a narrative strategy, and the real was expressed in art during the Middle Ages instead of the constructed images of great heroes in the past in Greco-Roman literature, especially in drama. Unlike that, we have a different type of diverse experiences narrated in the literature of the art of the Middle Ages. The culture of the period was eclectic, diverse, not belonging to a single paradigm as in the past, deriving ideas from a wide range of sources, of course influenced by the classical world. Some portray or depict the Middle Ages as a period of constant rewriting of past works, rewriting of the past from different perspectives. The single perspective of the central character is almost lost with the fall of the empires, Greek or Roman empires. And there was a little bit of confusion about the content of writing. The church and individual monar monasteries had to preserve classical works in the midst of invasion by the Vandals, Goths and Norsemen. There was some kind of an attack by anti-socials evil forces of the society and the churches had to or the monasteries had to preserve classical literature. This resulted in preserving certain narrative traditions and the death of others. The attempt of the churches to preserve resulted in the preservation of some narrative traditions and at the same time some other narrative techniques were dead and up. The kind of identity alluring to characters, narrators and authors within the written medium enables different means of rendering narrative identity. In the classical period, we had a very strong hero to emulate, to copy, to follow, but we have different characters having various qualities and this created a different kind of identity to the people who, who followed art or literature of those times. That is why the 16th or 17th century British people, Europeans in general, they went back to classical literature or the theory of Aristotle and Plato to construct a kind of strong individuality and character, identity, because there was a confusion regarding characters, narratives and such things during the Middle Ages. The great figures of the Middle Ages were Geoffrey Chaucer in Britain in the 15th century, Boccaccio, 14th century Italian writer and 
in france there was rabelais during uh, the 15th century again who dominated during the renaissance period in europe means it was a transition period from the middle ages to the modern age the english that we have in chaucer is of the middle ages it it is with the shakespeare we say that the modern english begins with the printing of the bible publication of the bible and some 36 plays of shakespeare with that begins the modern period in english literature before that till chaucer there was some kind of an old english and in which there were stories narratives having multiple centers there was no symphony in narration symphony was a virtue that was founded later during the renaissance period and there was an utter cacophony a mixture of different voices during the middle ages and the people's identity also will be of the same type from that disintegrated personalities one has to create a very strong character identity by reading or watching dramas in those time where there are strong characters and also having unity of time place and action such a kind of tightness was brought in narrative so that we will never be disintegrated when we speak about modern novels having multiple centers we go back to the middle ages the narratives of the middle ages when we reinvent the story telling tradition in the 20th century we go back to boccaccio or rabelais or chaucer for getting models to emulate to copy to imitate before chaucer and boccaccio there was dante in italy in the 14th century and poets and artists who wanted to tell truth convey truth construct truth in poetry or in their artworks considered dante's divine comedy and such works as highly artificial dante was following virgil the classical footsteps and when we come to chaucer we have a different narrative unlike that we see in dante in 20th century t s elliot goes back once again to dante to recover dante the structure classical structure of literature and in between that some kind of a looseness in narration was effected brought out by jeffrey chaucer and others the poets believed that they had escaped from the dilemma of artifice see there did not be some kind of a tightness about narrative they thought they had a different type of narrative in use in the middle ages which was highly decentered we can say cacophonous there was no a single authorial voice made available in these writers the Canter- canterbury tales written by chaucer is a collection of stories articulated by the pilgrims at the tabard inn on a journey towards the tomb of thomas a becket see characters different characters their voices coexisting together each character st- telling a different story they were on a, on a uh, pilgrimage towards some holy place and they assembled at one particular inn and told the stories so there was no single author telling the whole story instead of that so many characters so many voices uttered different stories we can say but different voices were heard chaucer's individual voice cannot be heard he was just assembling he was there not controlling the whole voices of the characters who spoke in his tales each of the stories were 
recognizably morality tales and therefore didactic in nature there will be some uh, ethics in the aesthetics of the story morality would be there some teachings would be there some lessons can be learned the moral of the story can be had towards the end of the story the narratives painted immoral aspects prevalent prevalent in society during the chosarian age there was utter chaos and confusion in those days and all those could be seen in the narrative of canterbury tales chaucer was giving space for the different voices of his age then the italian writer boccaccio in his decameron stories its narrative is also presented in a similar frame it's a collection of a hundred tales narrated over a, a ten days by seven women and three men women also had made their voice heard in the stories of boccaccio there was no male supremacy in chaucer as well we can see so many women women of bath bath is the name of a place names of women are associated with the place where from they come so women had equal status of men in those narratives only when we come to shakespeare we can see in his tragedies male stories are given prominence or uh, stories of men are given more space in shakespeare's comedies we have strong women characters but most often when we speak of shakespeare speak about shakespeare we speak about his major tragedies great heroes so in boccaccio and chaucer's stories in the cameron stories or in the canterbury tales we can have the voice of women heard and so many people of not so eminence ordinary people and their everyday life as we would say nowadays had space in narrative chaucer and boccaccio problematized the poet's voice the author's voice the narrative voice by presenting tales framed by a narrator who comments in them ironically rebelles on the other hand prefer to distance the author and character in his work called gargantua and pantagruel a story of a father and son in chaucer and boccaccio we can see the presence of the author at least has one among the voice of the character commenting upon the voice of the characters there was a central figure centrality as far as the writer is concerned but we when, when we come to france and french writer rabelais a satirist the narration is free of authorial control rabelais characters they were detached from the author they were giving voice to even uh, evil characters or uh, characters need not always be very sane or virtuous in rabelais works in jargon to a we have the story of a giant and we can never see the author speaking about himself they were documenting the multiple manifestations of different beings of those times in the middle ages <clears throat> it was easier to identify the poet or the author of a contemporary era at some points chose to narrate their stories in voices very different from their own it is not an expression of personality they never expressed their personality alone in the stories they were giving voice to others as well it was difficult to trace 
definitely which voices were more privileged or we can never understand whose voice is the other's voice the other speaks through all the characters alike the others or the characters and their voices were mixed up the other didn't have more privilege mikhail bakhtin a russian critic of the 20th century argued this polyphonic multiple voiced effect in a narrative is a defining feature of the novel form novels originated from these kinds of narratives of the middle ages now novels have the coexistence of different voices simultaneously in its narrative unlike in drama of the classical period or of the shakespearean times a novel would have different centers anything and everything can be said in a novel the novel was again again uh, a narrative which was reinvented later in the style of certain narratives romances we would call of the middle ages before the rise of the novel in 1957 ian watt a theoretician says that the novel began in the west in the 18th century and before the rise of the novel the first novel being pamela of samuel richardson the novel as we see now was an invention of the writer writers of the 18th century but novel was there in a different form earlier in history mainly as prose narratives and the novelists of the 18th century were reinventing the prose narratives of the earlier times so before the rise of the novel in the 18th century the romance was developed becoming another major european narrative tradition romance has some connection with uh, the latin word romanize which means rights and etymologically it has some connection with the novel so romances were stories that portrayed chivalry and courtly life of the late 14th century like mallory's la morte di arthur death of the king arthur which dealt with the arthurian legend the story of king arthur the romantic narratives in english were frequently derived from the works of french and german writers of these types philip sidney's arcadia and a celebrated spanish narrative by cervantes don quixote de la mancha developed a new writing style which mingled epic and romance this was prominent in works like fairy queen by english poet edmund spenser see novel has some connection with romance and also some connection with epic in its narrative structure drama was of different type novel is highly decentered and drama was highly centered the reason for the spread of romance was the technology of printing printing press in europe invented by gutenberg established by gutenberg and also in britain by william caxton in 1485 they printed romance literature the spread of romance literature the most popular one being death of arthur the king it was adapted and translated from french and published in english printed in english by william caxton in 1485 another reason for the popularity of romances was that such narratives were not written in classical languages like greek and latin during the fall of the greco roman empire 
some literature was preserved the priests or the clergymen or the monasteries they preserved these literatures of the past times but ordinary people could not have any kind of access with the great literature of those times but when everything was translated into english people began to get literature in their vernacular in their ordinary language they spoke in their everyday life it was written in the vernacular language thus accessible to readers anybody can read people who were literate could read as we now read novels and short stories people who did not know the language of the church like latin could read now as in india literature was locked in sanskrit people translated sanskrit texts into malayalam now we are able to read any text through translations the same thing happened in england during the 16th century people began to read romances prose writings at the same time they watched drama shakespearean theater was there later theater was closed and the only leisure time activity past time for people was to read this romance prose literature and this ended up in the making of a new art form called novel something new in europe the term novel derived from the old italian term novella and meant to be a reasonably short narrative in earlier times there were prose narratives of large size and for for the benefit of the modern read short novels were invented or written the romance of the 14th century emphasized the existence of the later narrative forms which was then explored in 16th to 19th century novels of the modern period means we have a history of almost 5 centuries when we speak about novels of the modern period the modern novel has got some roots and one has to go back to the narrative of narratives of the middle ages to know about the narrative strategy the mechanism of writing the decentered type of narrative of the novels of europe the novel was not the outcome of a technical response to epic and romance but existed in an embryonic form with a highly fictional narrative embedded with multiple characters even in the first century see one can go back to the first century for getting the roots of the modern novel see the great fall of the classical theater or literature or even in the empire itself after the fall we can see a kind of confusion or chaos was there and novel was born the grand structure of the novel was born and everything was an undeveloped state an embryo form in the embryo form in an embryonic form with a highly fictional narrative actual characters living characters not were there and the narratives were having so many characters of equal status and novel took some energy from these kinds of narratives the major development of the social milieu gave rise to a variety of reading matter like bible the printing press of the 16th century that made the availability of different narratives like bible even ballads tales picaresque tales adventurous heroes of those days histories chronicles biographies accounts of travels travelogues magazines periodicals journalism of all kinds this emerged with the invention of the printing press before that there was no such facility people had to watch drama by boy, by going to the theater now books 
began to yeah get circulated among readers and even by sitting at home one could read the 18th century novels slowly started to adopt a non fictional discourse of writings like journalism pamela by samuel richardson was in the form of letters a epistolary novel novel in the form of written letters writing letters was fashionable or we would draft letters for various purposes even legal and if we combine all those letters into one unit it can be a novel and the first novel was like that and travelogues people began to tell stories after long years of travel and gulliver's travels we have a novel or robinson crusoe we have a character like that these are all because of the different stories that people began to tell from different parts of the world and collected and storied stored and narrated in different fashions in the form of novels a drama could not be made because these characters are of uh, are not of any noble stature there are rogues there are scoundrels there are rascals there are vagabonds there are unruly men making themselves prominent prominently present in narratives so a kind of polyphony was there in these kinds of narratives for the 20th century people to imitate or 21st century people were to imitate bakhtin mikhail bakhtin for him novel is an interesting form of narrative because it it is heteroglossic having multiple senders or plural perspectives no monolithic structure of a drama could be found in a novel in simple terms novels are made up of many different voices many different narrative voices some of which may be even competing with the voice of the speaker the narrator the main narrator or the writer himself late in the 19th century literacy history and theory created literary narratives leaving research on folk tales to a group of specialists in 1880 the pioneers of the empirical approach means people approach literature not based upon any kind of theory but on personal experiences they formed a finnish school and published a collection of folk tales of finland the aron thompson in indo which is now listed with 2500 summarized variants of folk tales folk tales had narratives different from the modern short story for a short story there will be a very strong center but for stories of the past we won't have that kind of a strong structure in the essay storyteller walter benjamin a german critic in his 1926 article he speaks about storytelling instead of story writing instead of writing a short story people were able to tell stories and he was reinventing the tradition of the middle ages and once again we go back to chaucer boccaccio and such early modern or pre modern writers for the type of narrative a different type of narrative which will create a different kind type of identity also for the modern individuals for effecting democratic democratic virtues for practicing democracy in our society we have to read such stories or listen to such stories then only we will be able to listen to the voice of others 
like music so in the most modern post modern scenario we have all these types of narratives made available in the market and capitalism would of course make a parody of all these kinds of narratives and one should note the difference between democracy and capitalism even in narrative strategies narrative structures so literature and language and such manifestations that we make in our everyday life all these things are very much significant they have their own ideology at work and we have to analyze these things with the help of the linguistic discourses made available to us through different medium written oral visual audio visual whatever be the mode of the presentation of all those things all these things narrative is there at the core of everything so narration and representation is a very significant topic that we have to take into serious account